Hey YouTubers, Roland Martin here. Let's do some bank fishing. Okay, it's early in the morning. The number one rule, hey, get an early start. You need this low light, this fog is perfect. This is a good time of morning for a good heavy bite. Okay, what are we gonna use? Well, we know the old Cinco. Hey, we know the Cinco is gonna be a good deal. But just because I wanna cover some water and that's a good feeding time, let's try a swim jig. So let's just go down to this canal. There's a little bit of water movement here. Let's go down to this canal and let's look at the canal a second. I think there's a little bit of current. I notice there's a little bit of current there. And I see those little patches of hydrilla out there. Okay, and then it drops off deep. So if I throw the swim jig or the up current side, I'm gonna to try to do that. I'm gonna just kind of come down here and I'm just gonna kind of be sneaky about it. Okay, there's a little patch of hydrilla there. I'm gonna just be quiet. I'm gonna adjust my drag. I got 50 pound test line, 50 pound test braid. I'm gonna take my swim jig, go past the thing, okay. Just let it sink down right there. That was really a good looking spot. Woo, we didn't bite it. Ah, darn, we didn't bite it. Well, who knows? Try it again. Try the left side. The old swim jig is nice. You can cover a lot of water. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swim it along the grass. I can feel it. Now see, that's the thing. There's hydrilla patches in there, and it's it's deep water around the hydrilla. So I'm, I, as soon as it clears the hydrilla, I kind of let it drop down. Yeah. Didn't bite it. Let's try another one. Throw it out there. Okay, swim along slow and easy. You know, it really pays to be observant. Look at, at the water and see where the movements are and it, listen to real quiet, quickly and quietly and be quiet. There, well, I missed, I just missed one. I just missed one. Hang on it. I'll throw it right back in the same spot. Let it sink down. It just, there he is. I got him, son. I got him. I got, I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh, yeah. Nice little bass. Hey, that's the way to bank fish. Now, you know, I noticed that the first cast I made in there, he ticked it. He just hit it real slight and easy, and I threw right back exactly the same spot. When you do miss a fish and you throw back, always throw past the fish. And that's what I did then. I threw past them, okay, and see if I can't catch another one. Like usually, oh, hey, my tail is all messed up. Let me just show you some tails I'm using, and it's really the right kind of tail. And that is a Zaco. I got this new Zaco system, and it's a Zaycos are a brand new bait by Yamamoto, and it's a it's a four inch minnow, and it's perfect on swim jigs, and it's perfect on the back of a of a of a, of a, a, a chatter bait. It's perfect on the back of this little swim jig like this, and to hook it up, I just come through the the head of it and come up the top, and just kind of come through about an inch, pull it up, push it right back up on there. I got the right deal there. Nice white swim bait. Let's see if they bite that. They're in the same spot. A lot of swirls. Now, I'm also seeing some, I think, tilapia. You know, tilapia are four and five and six pound fish, and they swirl the water, and they look a lot like a bass taking off. So I don't know if there's tilapia in here. I know there's tilapia in here. But I just saw one swirl right there. I had just one hit. One hit it. One hit. There he goes. <laughs> he came right out. Right out. <laughs> Look, followed it up. Now there's some bigger fish here. This is just a little bitty fish. Okay. I'm telling you. You can catch big fish off the bank. People think, well, you know, you need to catch, 
actually one of the things you have to do on the bank is looking at this bank. Let me get another, another Seiko. There's little points real close here. And so sometimes rather than throw way out there, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of pitch and flip right to these close little points. I'm going to get another trailer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll put this on and just kind of do a little pitch cast and see if I can't get a fish because I think there's a fish maybe there, maybe there, maybe there. So rather than throw way out there, I'm just going to be make a little quiet little pitch cast and see if I can't kind of, it's a jig remember, so even though it swims, it's also a jig. So I can take my rod and just kind of flip it out there. Sometimes they'll bite that thing really, really well. It's pretty deep right here. Let me try the old worm trick. The old worm. The swim bait's not working real good. We'll try the old plastic worm. Now, I have, this is a six inch uh, Senko 297. This happens to be my favorite color. It's a green pumpkin with the red flake. And uh, it's not a 297, it's a 208, I think. But anyway, got a little eighth of an ounce of lead weight right there, a little, a little bobber stop. This is heavy braid. I got it on my favorite rod. Throw it way out there. And see what happens. Just kind of just milk it along. Oh, there's a strike. Yeah, there, that's what we're talking about. Maybe that worm, oh yeah, look at that guy. Now we're talking. That's what we're talking about. They didn't hit the swim bait good, but they hit the worm. So that, that was a good deal. That was a good deal. It, that's what, why you need the big heavy line when you're bank fishing. You need a heavy line for this reason. You gotta pull it right up through the grass and now hit the big old four and five pounder. <laughs> now we're talking. That's what we're talking about. That's why we have heavy line. Heavy line's the deal. Isn't that a beauty? That's what we're talking about. Big, beautiful bass. I'm gonna try, try to throw him back. Careful, I can't really get out there very far, so I gotta kinda of pitch him a little ways, but it's, he's gonna be all right. Right there. Oh, there he goes. Okay, let's try that again. That was a neat deal. That was a real neat deal. Maybe the worm, you know, you never know. Sometimes this, I'm telling you what, a Cinco is magic. It's magic. It's just absolutely magic. I don't know how many times you catch really good fish with a Cinco. Reel down on them. Set the hook. Yeah, sir. Yeah, nice one. All right, nice one. <laughs> Son, you hit out in the middle of that channel. Yes, sir. The old Cinco trick. <laughs> you know, you never really know what they're going to bite. That's the whole point. When you come over to a spot like this and you bank fish, I have a compliment of lures. Okay. I have a frog in the real heavy cover. I have a, a top order using the form of a, of a uh, I always use a, either a, a buzz bait or possibly even a buzz frog. Or even a, like a, uh, a devil horse. A devil horse is an awful good top order. And then you never can put down a spinner bait. A spinner bait is something that you just have to have just, just in case the wind starts to blow and things really get active. The, the spinner bait can really be good. But day in and day out, if you're a bank fisherman and you want to catch just fish the whole year, I don't think you can beat the Cinco. Now I'm using the six inch Cinco and it's on heavy line because I'm in South Florida. The five inch Cinco or even the four inch Cinco is another uh, lure of choice, but I usually use it in waters, you know, say up north where the fish aren't quite as big and I don't have to use this big heavy braid like I'm doing. You, know, you notice when I'm fi fi fishing this Cinco, what I'm doing, I'm holding my rod at a 45. I'm watching it. I'm a line watcher, okay? Watching that line. Okay. Pretty deep. Okay, line watcher. Just kind of just watch that line. 
See, and by having it at a 45, you notice the, the line comes off it at a 90 degree angle. And that means that I have the most sensitivity with the line coming off the rod tip at a 90 degree angle. That's the most sensitivity you can have. The worst sensitivity is right here. You can't feel, if you're retrieving it like that, you can't feel any strike. And he'll, they'll feel you every time. So don't do that. Okay. Well, there's some beautiful bass in here, son. I'm going to catch a big one. I'm going to catch a big one. I got a strike. I'm going to set the hook. Okay. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Yeah, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yes, sir. That's the kind of bass we need. That's the kind of bass. That's the kind of bass, son. Okay. Now we're talking. That is the deal. Beautiful, beautiful bass. Never been caught before. You know, another thing I like to do when I'm fishing an area like this is I'll look at his mouth and I'll see, because I don't know if anybody else has been down here fishing or not, but I don't see any, any kind of sign that he's ever been caught before. So I'll throw him back out there and rig up my worm. Okay. Now, you know, I'll, I'll give you a little tip. You know, these, these Cinco's are pretty expensive. And so I've kind of torn up the one part of it, this head part of it right here. I've torn it up. So if I take it and turn it around, cut just a little bit off, right there. Okay, now come through the tail. They hit it tail first, as good as they hit it head first. Okay, bury the hook in there. And I've now, I can catch another one or two bass. He's right here. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, little one. Just a little one. Oh, well. But that's not the one. You know, there's evidently a school of fish here. That's the other thing to think about is once you catch one, you know, you could be, you could be in a whole big school. I think that's what we got here because that, that last one was not the one that hit the time before because the time before I, I felt him, he was way bigger. He had to be a lot bigger fish. Okay, let's see what we can do here. This time, I'm throwing the same spot. Get my worm all adjusted. There's a little spot right there that I've had basically all the fish out of. And that's kind of a school situation right here. Kind of right here, right there. Okay, I'm a line watcher, I'm a line watcher, letting it sink down, letting it sink down, watching that line. Okay, it's on the bottom. Just kind of pull it along. Watch that line. Now, braid is more sensitive than, than the monofilament or, or fluorocarbon, and I can feel the strike on a long cast a lot better with braid, even though there's a little bit of wind. There's one. <laughs> Not very big. He hit the swim bait. Funny because I just gone through there and I just fished the heck out of it with a worm. So that just shows you that the, there's more fish in these places than you give it credit for. I made five or six casts there with a worm, but for whatever reason, hey, that fish wanted this white swim bait. So, you know, you never know for sure what they're going to bite. Now this morning I start off with just a couple baits. I should have brought some spinner baits. I should have brought some top order. I should have tried more things. But we know we know with hitting these two things, pretty good. You know, it's funny. This week I was supposed to have gone turkey hunting in in Kansas. Well, funny thing happened. The governor of Kansas, she issued a quarantine for anybody coming from Florida has to wait 14 days before they can buy a hunting license. And so I was gonna go to this, uh, my Midwestern uh, Whitetail Adventures camp. It's it, it, at a place called Clay Level, uh, Kansas. It's a great place for turkey hunting. And I was gonna turkey hunt right now. But of course, with the, with the virus going around, I can't travel. They won't, they're quarantining everybody. So uh, the next best thing, 
get out all by myself on these canal banks, catch a few bass. Almost as good as turkey hunting. Okay, folks, there we go. There we go. I'll tell you what, it's, it, you know, when you can get out, we, we're in challenging times right now. There, with all the viruses going on, this is a great way of d d social distancing, getting out all by myself on these riverbanks, walking up and down these canals, catching a fish or two. Hey, I tell you what, there's nothing any better or more healthy than to get all by yourself out here on the banks of a of the, one of the rivers, lakes, or streams in your area. Keep away from other people. Catch some bass. Hey, folks, I post every Wednesday about 6 o'clock, and I post every Sunday about 6 o'clock. And every Friday, I do like a what's happening, what's up. It's what's up for the week deal. Hey, I'm going to show you a few things on how to catch these beautiful bass. Thanks for watching. Hey, and thanks for subscribing.